Okay, well, let's move on to Psalm 46. To the choir master of the son of Korah, according to Alamoth. Um, Anyway, uh, this particular psalm is a, a praise psalm. The last one was a royal psalm. This one's a praise psalm. I looked this up, and now I'm having trouble remembering it, and I didn't write it down. An Alamoth. Um, I'm, I'm wanting to say that it's uh, a type of an instrument that is used oftentimes, um, I remember what it is. It was uh, a virgin. It was a virgin, okay? And uh, it was someone who sang with, uh, what, what do you call it? Not, not an alto, but a- Soprano? Soprano, okay? And a virgin soprano. Is what that word means. Okay. I know it would come to me, but I just kept thinking. Alright. Verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and a very present help in trouble. That's a praise song. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, how does that affect your life? Well, it gives you reassurance. It does. Mm -hmm. Okay. That that he is our refuge, a place that we can retreat to when we're under attack. It's a refuge. That's where we get the word refugee, where people are escaping their war-torn territory or, or they have like uh, drug lords like in Mexico and they want to come here and claim asylum. It's a refuge to come here. And so uh, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way though the mountains be moved into the heart of the sea though its waters roar and foam though the mountains tremble at its swelling okay we got some language here descriptive language when we say therefore we will not fear though the earth gives way how does earth give way earthquakes sinkholes what else? Got some to get rid of it. I mean, when it just goes away, mm -hmm. you got unstable ground, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's not a good thing. I remember walking down the street in Charleston, South Carolina, and I was uh, a young man about 35, 36 years old. I was a pastor of a, a brand new church that we just started, and I was earning my living as an insurance salesman. And <laughs> we were going down the street, me and my sales manager, you know, we were both dressed up in coat and tie, walking down this, this dusty road, and all of a sudden, he falls in a hole. <laughs> I mean, he, he dropped about three feet into this hole. A sinkhole was there, and he stepped on it, and he went down. And I go, what in the world? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. It was a shock to him. It was a shock to me. And, I, of course, I helped him out, and he was just a grumbler. He was a uh, uh, part-time uh, insurance salesman. The other job that he had was he was the, the weatherman on Channel 4 News down in uh, uh, Charleston. And so he had two jobs, and that morning he got really dirty. And he had to go to, to the, the uh, news, whatever that place is called, broadcast center. And uh, he was upset about it. The idea that your foundation, that you can just be walking along and things just fall apart, yep. is not just a reality physically, it's a reality yeah. emotionally and spiritually. We have those kinds of events, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, what happens when the foundations just cave in on you? Well, how do you deal with that? Most of us turn to somebody we know. Okay. Or ways that we know. We go back up to verse 1. 
God is our refuge yeah. and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Though its waters, in verse 3, roar and foam, though the mountains tremble at its swelling, anybody been in an earthquake? You ever felt an earthquake? We felt one here, uh, was it last year? Uh, when that one hit up there in North Carolina. I felt it at my house and a bunch of them in Marietta did. It was just a little vibration. Uh, like your whole house shook and you're like, what was that? And and then I uh, look up my phone and I said, earth like it hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, there's a earthquake fault that goes right through Charleston mm -hmm. and they got quakes all the time. Yeah, they said there'd been a bunch of them in the last year. Yeah. From the Elgin on up. Mm -hmm. And so it feels like something hits the house you know, yeah. like something for somebody to run off the road and run into. Like the house. railroad tracks just, just kind of shakes. Yep. Yeah. Um, so it, it's kind of a disturbing thing, but it wasn't anything like has happened in certain areas like in California mm -hmm. where they had that major quake. Right. I remember when the, they had the, uh, the freeway, they had the bridges mm -hmm. on top of, of, mm -hmm. of the free, and it just collapsed right. and sandwiched yeah. all those people in there. And, it's a very scary thing to see that kind of power in Mother Nature. Okay, it says in verse 4, let me get this to work, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. What is this river? Anybody got an idea? There's a song that says there is a river that flows. I was trying to think what it said that flows from the throne of God. I don't know if that's where this river is, but. Okay. I think you're on to something. Hold your finger on this passage and we're going to go somewhere else. Y'all like doing this, don't you? Psalms 36. Psalms 36, verse 8. <clears throat> Somebody read that out loud. They are abundantly satisfied with the fullness of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your of your of your pleasures. Okay. Zechariah fourteen eight. Somebody read that for us. For who? Zechariah fourteen. Fourteen. Verse eight. picture of, of the end times <clears throat> when the new Jerusalem comes down, the river will flow out of living waters okay, and it will heal the, the nations. Those waters will just flow out in different directions and it will heal the eastern and the western nations. Okay? Revelation 22.1 Somebody read that when you get to it. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. Okay. So we can use scripture to, when we see something like this, and we're not really, you can kind of look up, especially in today's, you know, just go to your computer, type in rivers whose streams make glad the city of God, and, and type it in and see if there's any other references to this kind of thing. Sure. And these other references will give you more information. And it, so studying scripture is kind of like being a, 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 a detective. Uh, you don't need to be a grand theologian to know it all. Uh, you can be like me, I guess, a lot of stuff just because I, I read other scriptures. And scripture verifies scripture. Mm -hmm. It always does. Um, and so you're looking for patterns. You're looking for ideas. In verse 5, he says, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. 
What's he talking about here? The, her is what? The city of God, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, she's not going to be moved. God will help her in the morning when the morning dawns. All right, let's, we don't know what that means. So let's look at Psalms 30, verse 5. See what it says. His anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. We can make carry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Okay, so this whole idea of pain and suffering, of living life like we do, uh, is caught up in this idea that, that God is in the midst of her. He's already with you. You're the city of God. You're the people of God. He's already there in the midst of you. And uh, she shall not be moved. No matter what happens in your life, you're not going to be moved. God has you. He's got your, your salvation in his hand. He's not going to let it go. We sometimes get the feeling like we need to perform in order to keep our salvation. Don't we? If, I, if I'm not reading my Bible, I might not be saved. I'm not doing what I'm supposed to do. That's wrong thinking. Don't think like that. God's got your salvation. Now you just act out of gratitude. If you act out of gratitude, then it don't matter what you do. Just be grateful. Mm -hmm. You've already got the salvation. God's got it. It's in his hand. He's not going to let it go. You don't have to perform. What you have to do is be grateful. If you're not grateful, then you might need to worry. Where's the gratitude? The gratitude is what motivates action on our part. It is not action to get something. We can't get it. God is going to save us or he's not. Only God knows. What we can work on is our own heart. Our goal is to seek God, not the gifts of God. You see that? When we're seeking the gifts of God, we're circumventing the whole thing. We're trying to get what the good things that God has without getting the person who provides it. That's like getting married to a sugar daddy. <laughs> right? You, you don't want this guy. You want this guy's money. Yep. Right? Yep. You, you've seen that kind of action? Sure. I mean, everybody wants what they want, but they don't want what they don't want. And that's a condition of the heart. And so when we're studying God's scripture, we've got to understand what he's talking about. He's talking about your heart. Okay? Um, God is in her midst. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. When's the morning going to dawn? Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil for my... Uh, what is it? I got stuff memorized and it just goes just like that. But thy rod and thy staff, they are with me. Okay? God knows what he's doing. He's with you all the way through this. The journey of the Christian faith goes through a lot of darkness, a lot of wickedness, a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, but when God's with you, you should fear no evil. So our hearts should just be full of gratitude and praising him in, in all that we do. And, and we get excited about what he's doing, and that's what he's talking about here in verse 5. When the morning dawns, the wedding feast begins. We were talking about that. Uh, Crystal wanted to go down and uh, put a flower on my mother's grave and so we did that and she's talking about those people in that grave you know well, those people in that grave are, are asleep they don't know you exist did y'all know this mm -hmm. now the bible says that to be absent from the lord is uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord, with the lord. okay well that's true yep. 
But what does it say in the Old Testament? That you go to sleep. Yeah, that you go to sleep. Yep. Yeah. I, I don't remember the chapter and verse. I should have looked that up for him, but I didn't know I was going to talk about this. But uh, uh, when, when the Bible says two different things, you've got to work that out theologically. It is true that the body, when it dies, goes to sleep. The Bible also says that the dead in Christ shall rise first. So right. the dead shall rise right. at the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Okay? That's when they're going to be with the Lord. Mm -hmm. When they rise. Well, when they go to sleep, they don't know how long that time is. They have no idea. But when they die, when Kay wakes up, she's going to look at the Lord's face. She's going to be with the Lord mm -hmm. right then. For her, it's instantaneous. Right. But for us, it's been 20-something years since Kay died. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do you deal with all that? Well, I don't worry about it. The Lord's going to work all that out. <laughs> the Lord is working it out. I don't have to worry about it. I trust that the Lord is good and that he knows what he's doing. Verse 6. The nations rage. You think the nations are raging? Mm -hmm. Yep. Raging right now. Yep. Um. Kingdoms totter. Elon Musk, anybody ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. Elon Musk said something this week that just kind of disturbed me. I'm thinking, what are you doing? <laughs> he said something about China needs to decide whether they want to be Russia's friend or not. He tried to encourage China to go to war against Russia and the United States to go to war against Russia that everybody gang up on Russia and take out the competition. What are you doing? Makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Did you know that uh, Elon Musk, with the, with, with the approval of the United States, fired upon a satellite that belonged to Russia and destroyed it this week? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? <laughs> Trying to start World War III. Why are we getting in war with Russia? That's what the Bible says we're supposed to do. I see uh, these political pundits get on TV and say, we have to win. Win what? We've not declared war. Why are we doing this sort of thing? Um, this is not a good thing. It's not a good thing at all. Uh, I don't think anybody in this room wants to see nuclear exchange with Russia. Mm -hmm. um, this is not good. He utters his voice. The earth melts. How does that happen? Because he created, he can take away. You sure? Fire. Nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons? If that verse doesn't scare, if not scare you, but if it doesn't make you fear God mm -hmm. and what his word says, there's something wrong because that's all he has to do is just utter his voice and it's gone. Mm -hmm. And our, the angrier, the madder he gets at what's happening, the worse his wrath is. it's kind of like in Noah's days, you know, we're just living our lives for whatever we want. And I was on the trail today. And I was walking through there, and all of a sudden, I come to this area, and it's all burned up. So on this side, on the trail, there's been a fire. And everything, all the greenery and everything, the beauty is gone. Over on this side, it's a lush, green grass, you know. And I said, here's paradise, and here's destruction. Mm -hmm. Here's hell, and here's earth. Yeah. It just, it was just like... One of those moments, you know, that um, that's all he has to do is utter his voice. And so we read scripture and we see things in our own world, and when it's spoken out loud, it brings a little beat, an extra beat to the heart. It makes you, know? you think, think. What, what is going on? What is yeah. God saying to us? We do need a healthy fear, but that fear needs to be in the right thing. Mm -hmm. We don't need to fear the politicians. Mm -hmm. We need to fear God. Mm -hmm. 
God will bring about his justice. Mm -hmm. uh, he doesn't need to ask anyone. Mm -hmm. He will do it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to save anyone. Mm -hmm. He will do it. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to condemn anyone. He will do it. All we have to do is trust in him. Mm -hmm. And those who have faith will be like Moses and Abraham and Jacob and Isaac and all of those that followed after them, it will be counted unto them as faith, as righteousness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we're doing. We're, we're having a faith in God himself, and, and that's what he's trying to do. In verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That word fortress has come up again. My mother used to make ceramics. Anybody made ceramics? I mean, she was into it big time. And she made these chess pieces that were about from the table here, about that tall. And she made a, uh, a, a rook, a, it looked like a little castle. Mm -hmm. And it, it stood about that tall. And uh, she gave it to me and I, I scraped it. And you know, you have to clean the edges and all that sort of stuff. And then you have to paint it. And then you have to put this gloss on it. And then you put it in there and they fire it up and it comes out a finished product. Well, I had that thing for years. I don't know what happened to it until it disappeared. But I, I took that Bible verse about God being our fortress and I put it right on the side of that, that roof. And I, I think about the fact that, that God is my fortress, that he is the one that protects me against all the things that have happened. Mm -hmm. And yet he is also the one who has allowed all the things to happen. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a conundrum. It's something that we have to deal with and we have to decide ultimately is God good or is God evil? How you de de determine that uh, choice is in the heart. You have to have faith that he's good because a lot of times all we see is the evil. And when we focus on the evil alone, it scares me. Because if you just look at the evil and you're not going to look at the good, then you become that which you look at. Mm -hmm. You will become that evil thing. We get angry and all we can see is why we're angry. We get hurt and all we can do is look at why we're hurt. But we can't look beyond that. We have trouble doing that. Mm -hmm. We have to look beyond it and say, what is the purpose of it all? Is there a greater scheme of it? And some just uh, openly confess that, no, there's no reason. And they become um, like this world is. It's very fatalistic. And they give up. They decide that life is not worth living. And it is a very destructive thing. And uh, that's why you have um, suicides at an all-time high right now. Uh, it's very bad. Okay, verse 7. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Look at Psalms 9.9. 9. Somebody read that when you get to it. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. Okay. Look at Psalms 24, 6. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek the face of God, the God of Jacob. Okay. So, what the Bible keeps telling us is the same pattern over and over again. That there is... Uh, our help in this world is the God of Jacob. That God uh, will help you just like he did Jacob. Verse 8. Come behold the works of the Lord how he has brought desolations on the earth. Who brought those desolations on the earth? We did. Our sin did. Okay. Come behold the works of the Lord how he is that not referring to the Lord? Yeah, he brought it on us because of how we've lived. 
That's right. And it is because of our sin, because of our wickedness, because of man's uh, judgment. Um, verse 9, he makes war cease the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariot with fire. Now, the book of Revelation teaches that in the end times, that the earth will never again be destroyed by water. And it does tell us another way. By fire. By fire. That the earth will burn. And the seas will be evaporated. There will be no more. And that the earth will be purified by fire. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth that will come to pass. And that uh, all of that will take place. And so war will be no more. That's a prophecy again here in verse 9. Psalms are full of prophecies. They're just loaded down with them. Verse 10, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Notice that same phrase, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. It happens how many times? Three. Three times. All right. What does it mean when the Bible repeats itself? That's important. It's very important. The Lord of God is our fortress. That's very important. It's a concept that permeates all of Scripture. It goes through every book of the Bible. God is our fortress. He's our protector. He's our life. He's everything. And that's this is how you fall in love with God himself. You look at his attributes. And you see how he shows you over and over again. These things are happening. Yes, they are happening. But God is our fortress. And that even if you are destroyed yourself, you will rise again. Mm -hmm. So don't fear the one who can destroy the body. Fear the one who can destroy the soul. And so that's where we're at. How much time we got? 649. 649? Okay, we really don't have time to go into anything else in detail. So let's stop there. And uh, is anything that you wanted to add to this? Take away, say anything you got out of it personally? I wanted to say something. Timothy and I were talking, I think it was yesterday, and I, I said to him then, I said, Timothy, I said, do you realize that we we have a God that's the God of the universe that just spoke everything into existence, and he doesn't need us. We need him. Absolutely. He's never needed us. He loved us, and the only reason... Um, that we have any stake in any of this at all is because of the cross. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. And I That's said, it. that gives you goosebumps to think about the God of the universe with all the power that he has chose us. Mm -hmm. We didn't choose him. He had and all he wants is a good attitude about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he wants. He, he, doesn't, he wants you to go uh, crazy or anything. Just... Be grateful. Mm -hmm. You better be thankful. He's not a vengeful God. Yeah. You know, I don't see how you can not love the man. Uh, I've had a lot of people in my life that that just don't understand how to be grateful. And I've had others that not only grateful, but they suffered more than the ones that weren't grateful. Mm -hmm. And I never have understood that. Usually you see the people that suffer the most, they're the ones who are the most appreciative. Mm -hmm. And could it be that there's a relationship between suffering and gratitude? Mm -hmm. I think there is. I think there's a relationship in the sense that suffering in itself is a teacher. It gives mm -hmm. us a perspective on life. Mm -hmm. That there is meaning to life. Uh, and it will have greater meaning when the suffering is over with and we spend eternity in the love of Christ. Mm -hmm. um, it, 
eternity wouldn't mean that much mm -hmm. if I had never suffered. Mm -hmm. I need the suffering because the suffering reveals the goodness and the greatness of who God is. If we didn't suffer, we wouldn't really care whether we worship God mm -hmm. or not because we'd be fine. Wasn't yeah. it just Steve who sat there and said one day um, in class that um, if we never had any bad in our life, we wouldn't want, we wouldn't know what good is? Mm -hmm. Somebody said that in one of these mm -hmm. classes. I forget mm -hmm. who, but. But it's true, and when, and when people talk about suffering, and I think about what we go through, I think of the children who are born with diseases, mm -hmm. and you look at them and the strength that they have automatically from the very first day that it starts, and every day that they don't feel good, and the strength that they have to continue going through all the stuff they have to go yeah. through. I mean, that there is true strength as far as I can see. There's one other thing that it does for us. It prepares us for a greater suffering. Mm -hmm. And when does that usually happen? Especially after you're saved. Life gets harder the older you get. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and amen. And so True. God prepares us for the trouble to come by showing us in his grace and love suffering we've already been through. And we made it. God is good. He's going to get us through mm -hmm. to the very end. And also know that Jesus didn't just suffer on the cross when you think of suffering. He suffered from the moment of conception. He was in a human's body and he came here as a human being. And I think a God as a human being in a baby's body growing up. And through those three years of just agony. Amen. Are we all good? Mm -hmm. I'd just like to say on um, Psalms 40, um, yeah, Psalms 4610, that be still and know that I am God. Um, I was visiting this couple one time, and they were an elderly couple, and he gave me their card, and on that card was the scripture, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you, after he gave me that, um, I just, there were so many things that happened that I had to just bring myself back and say, be still and know that I am God. You know, we get all frustrated, we can get anxious, we can get going in all these different directions. And sometimes God just wants us to be still yep. and know that he is God. And, yep. that. and that's something we don't do today. People don't sit still. Uh, Charles Stanley all the time says we don't, we don't take time to meditate. Right. People can't stand silent. They don't want a silent house. They want racket all the time mm -hmm. uh, in their cars or whatever. And uh, that's where you really find peace when it is silent. Yep. Or it is for me. Okay. We still got some goodies up front. <laughs> um, come get your calories. I know you need <laughs> <laughs> All right. Miss Nancy, would you close the prayer? <laughs>